I do some sort of beauty trend related video every year during Vlogmas, but I just saw my friend Kaki post her video about trends that need to die, trends that we need to leave in 2022. And I thought it'd be fun to maybe be a little sassy in today's video and talk about some of my least favorite trends that I would like to leave in the year 2022. So I want to start out with just a full eyebrow segment because I feel like in the last few years, the eyebrow trends have been all over the place. We have seen like every extreme when it comes to brows. And I want to talk specifically about some of the trends that we saw this year. And I, I suppose with this entire video, we all know, like I probably don't need to say this, but I will. If you love wearing your eyebrows like this and it is very flattering to you, or even if it's not very flattering to you and you still love it anyways, please keep doing your eyebrows like that. I feel like with any of these, even when I don't love it 100% of the time, there are still plenty of people that pull it off and it looks great. But with that quick little disclaimer, the first one I'm gonna say is bleached eyebrows. I was not expecting this trend to become as big as it did in 2022. I thought the focus was going to be very heavily on the thin 90s brow, which we did see, and I think we will continue to see into 2023, but alternatively, I feel like the it eyebrow of 2022 was the bleached brow. 2021 was the year of the soap brow, 2022 was the bleached brow, which this and I guess a lot of these on my list, it's it's so dependent on the person and there definitely are people that pull off a bleached brow and I've seen it just like in the wild, in real life and I've like passed someone with bleached brows and thought, whoa, she looks really cool. And the people that pull it off, like they pull it off and it looks incredible. But I'm going to say that a good majority of people it looks like a mistake and I maybe the reason I feel so strongly about bleached eyebrows ironically you guys ironically I'm doing this whole segment about eyebrows and I feel like today I'm having the worst eyebrow day and I was so self-conscious getting ready I was like try to do your eyebrows the best because you're going to be talking a lot about brows don't come on camera like a fool with messed up eyebrows and then it's like on the days you need to have a good hair day or a good makeup day it's not gonna happen, but if I was just fully not doing anything today, I think my eyebrows would have behaved better. But anyways, the reason I think I personally don't love bleached eyebrows is because my natural brow hairs are so light. And so when I'm doing my makeup, if I leave brows for the last step, I already look like I have bleached eyebrows. So for me, when I see it on other people, I think probably that's why I view it as like, oh, you didn't finish your makeup because for me, that's what I would look like if I didn't finish my makeup. Okay, I'm also gonna lump soap brows in here though I feel like soap brows are definitely fading out. People still utilize that technique, but I wouldn't say we saw the extreme lamination effect that we saw last year. But I do feel like soap brows have spilled over into 2022. This is a trend where I think a variation of this technique can be beautiful. But I see it so often where the eyebrows are pointing straight up. And again, it looks unfinished. It looks like you started to comb your brows up and then step two was going to be to smooth them out. But then you forgot to do step two. Um, also in, in brows, in things with eyebrows that I didn't love this year. This is another one. On certain people, I love it. But it takes the right face shape for a straight eyebrow that is almost pointing up. And we saw this so much with all of the trends that are supposed to like lift your face. We saw, oh, draw your concealer over here. Fox eye, like the eyebrow to go with it. I saw so many videos, even in 2021, like this one also kind of spilled over, but so many videos of people shaving off half of their eyebrow to do like a straight brow that practically goes up. And if your natural eyebrow shape doesn't at least somewhat mimic that, it is so obvious when you look at someone, it looks like they're making a very shocked expression if that is not what is natural for their eyebrows. So I guess I could summarize this whole category as just, just do what you like for your eyebrows because sometimes these eyebrow trends, they just don't, they're not one size fits all. They are not gonna work for every face shape. Yes, some people look incredible with bleached brows. Sometimes a straight 
upwards brow looks amazing if it fits in with your bone structure and it's similar to your natural brow but just because it's trendy doesn't mean it's for everyone okay this next one this is another one. Oh, I feel like with this whole video, with each of these, there are people that do these trends well. And there are times when I see this next one and I love it. But there, it also goes wrong a lot, in my opinion. And that is baby bangs. I'm talking about the bangs that are about half the width of your forehead. So for a lot of people, you know, if you're going to do bangs, it's probably going to be like this long. Sometimes even wispier and longer. We saw this huge rise in the baby bang this year, and it's like this long. And again, there is this certain person that pulls it off. And when I see this every once in a while out and about, like there's someone who wears it and I'm like, whoa, she's really cool. Like the people who can pull it off, I envy so much. I think it looks incredible when it is done right. But I would say it is like a good 50-50. And half of the time, it just looks like a mistake. It looks like you were trimming your brows and you did the thing where you pull the eyebrow down and then try to cut and then it shrinks up and it's so much shorter than you were planning. That one, it's like I love it and I hate it at the same time, but mm, it's not my favorite. Um, next, this next one, it's the lip flip. So if you're unfamiliar with this, this gained a lot of popularity in 2022 as somewhat of an alternative to a lip filler. And it's when you have Botox injected in this area and it basically flips up your lip. And then especially when you're smiling, your lips look much more full. So I've seen people do it to, to get a little bit more fullness in their lips, but I've also seen people do this when they have a smile that exposes a lot of their gums Perhaps they feel un or not unconscious, that is not the word, self-conscious about it and getting the lip flip prevents um, as much of their gums from showing when they smile. So with this one, I mean with all of these, if you love a lip flip, keep getting it. Please keep getting it. But the reason I don't like this one is because oftentimes when people have this done, it makes anything... I don't know how to say this without it sounding inappropriate. I mean this in a fully like PG way, but anything with your mouth is much harder to do once you've had this done. What I mean by that is after you've had a lip flip, you can't uh, really drink through a straw because it's hard for your lips to fully close down. I've seen a lot of people describe having trouble speaking after they get a lip flip, especially letters that are like S or anything where your lips would have to purse a little bit to create that, you are unable to do that anymore. I've heard people say, you know, they'll be eating or drinking and like liquids will come spilling out of their mouth because they no longer have the ability to fully close their mouth. And this for me, this is where I feel like it crosses the line. If your beauty routine <laughs> is making it hard for you to speak and eat, we've gone too far. We have gone way too far. Like having full lips is not worth food dribbling out of your mouth when you're eating. And I'm sure there are people that have had a lip flip and haven't really had any of those downsides. I'm sure it depends a bit on the shape of your mouth, but in general, this just does not feel worth it to me. Either A, love and embrace smaller lips or B, find some lip liner, draw outside the lines. I don't know. But this one, I think, I feel like we have gone too far. Speaking of gone too far, you guys are going to be mad at me. I think, well, it's going to be 50-50, but we've gone too far with dewy skin, okay? And I love dewy skin, and don't get me wrong, in the like 2016 flat matte powder era, I was begging for dewy skin products, but like, Okay, that's enough, enough. We've taken it so far. Not everything has to be as hyper dewy as it is. And I feel like the dewy look, it is so, mm, it's always like teetering between dewy and glowy and natural and like maybe sweaty. And I say this as someone who has fallen victim to that side, to the bad side, to the way too much. And I look back on some pictures and even my face in videos sometimes and I'm like, huh, we've gone too far. And it's not even just the trend itself. It's that 
all of the makeup launches we've seen for the last few years have had such an emphasis on the glow that once you are using these all together, you've got your glowy primer, your glowy skin tint, your glowy powder. It's like something in there needs to be matte. I mean, maybe if you have super dry skin, you're like, no, disagree. But mm, I think we've gone too far. I also, my hot take, I, I know people will disagree with this, but my hot take is dewy skin doesn't look as youthful as people tend to think it does. I've heard, I hear people say all the time, like, oh, I have mature skin, so I have to do dewy products. And I think, yes, it can be more flattering in a lot of cases, but like there is a fine line because when something becomes so dewy that it's reflective, it's emphasizing texture, pores, lines. So I feel like a nice middle ground of a satin is typically the most flattering result for all skin types, for all ages. And that being said, I feel very strongly that 2023, we will see a matte resurgence. I feel like we've already seen the beginning of this happening throughout the year. And I talked about this in my video where I looked back on my predictions from the year. And I mentioned how we just see these trends flowing like a pendulum. So because super dewy skin was so trendy, inevitably matte skin is on the horizon. Like we're gonna see that for a while. And then you guys are probably gonna laugh in like four years when I'm making a video saying too much matte, we need to go back to dewy. It's just back and forth, but I'd like to find a bit of a balance in the new year. Like let's leave the super sweaty, greasy looks in 2022. This is another one. It's not that I'm against this trend. It's not that I'm against this because when it's done well, I'm like drooling. I'm like foaming at the mouth over this one, but it's not that easy to do well. And the trend is copper hair. Copper hair blew up in 2022. I think a big like I would say like the start of this was definitely when we saw Kendall Jenner dye her hair that color. And then we saw so many celebrities hop on board. I saw so many, you know, in real life, I see it often, but I would say, especially on the internet, I see so many influencers that went copper this year. And at first I was loving it because I feel like that hair color, it needed to have its moment. You don't see it as often, but there is a specific shade of red that will work for a specific undertone and person. And again, it is not one size fits all. So I feel like there has been this one particular copper shade that I have just seen across the board. It's like everyone took the same um, example photo into their stylist of Kendall Jenner's hair. And they're like, this is what I want without considering whether or not it's gonna work on their undertone with the rest of their vibe. I feel like if we're gonna continue to see red hair be so big in the new year, which I'm not against, I wanna see more variations of red. I wanna see the strawberry blonde. I wanna see more of the like magenta. I want to see the fiery hot red. It's just almost been too much of the exact same shade of red that again, looks beautiful on a lot of people, but there are certain people where I'm like, mm, if you would have tweaked this red to have a little bit more this or that in it, it would have been even better. And don't get me wrong, I had my very brief red hair era at the end of 2021. If you guys remember that during Vlogmas, there was a little time there where I had my like coppery red hair and I loved it. And I'm not saying I would never go that color again because I 500% will do my hair that color again. But if anything, it's not that I'm really over the red trend. I just would like to see it executed a little bit differently in the new year if it continues to be trendy. This next one is more of a general theme that I've seen and it's it's surrounding the conversation on aging, but I specifically want to pinpoint it down to Botox. And I'm not saying I'm against Botox, but I think the way the conversation around Botox has unfolded in the last few years is a little bit alarming to me. I, I'm 29, I've, I haven't had Botox done, but I'm not against anyone having facial procedures done. However, the normalization of Botox for women in their early 20s is scary. 
and I, I, I blame TikTok a little bit. The age of being more transparent on the internet is both good and bad because we're hearing people describe, oh, you know, I started getting Botox at this young age. And it's important that that influencer is transparent and shares that with their audience, especially if they're reviewing skincare or X, Y, and Z, like that level of transparency is wonderful to see. But I also think when we hear that echoed over and over again, that so many young people are getting Botox at shockingly young ages, it becomes normal in people's minds. And even a lot of my friends in my personal life that are around my age, maybe a bit younger, maybe a bit older, I've heard them say things like, oh, I feel like I, I'm supposed to be getting preventative Botox right now. Because that has been the big buzzword on the internet this year, preventative Botox or baby Botox, which they're all just Botox. You don't need to put the preventative or the baby in front of it. It's kind of all the same thing. I want us to get to a point where aging is okay and it is not something that we are running from. And I also feel like there is somewhat of a misconception or a disconnect for a lot of young people not really realizing what different ages look like. Someone said to me the other day, they, uh, this, was, this was on YouTube, and the commenter, no shade to her because I know she meant well, but I, she said in her video, or commented on my video, said, I can't believe you're 29, I'm 25, I hope I look as good as you at 29. And I know that it was fully intended as a compliment. And I know when people say things like this, like, oh, you look good for your age. It's, there's the intended compliment there, but I, I think we need to start viewing it as the actual backhanded compliment that it is because there's that inherent insinuation that you shouldn't look good at a certain age or this certain age is a negative thing. And in reality, to that girl who mentioned that, she probably is gonna look the same at 29 that she does at 25. I look pretty similar at 29 to what I did at 25. I see some differences. I notice, I mean, I mentioned in a recent video, I, I feel like now I have to wear eye primer when I didn't before. My eyeshadows move around a bit more. Um, my mascara touches my eye a little bit more because, you know, things move down. But overall, I don't look that different at 29. And even if I did, Aging doesn't need to be this terrifying thing that we've built it up to be. At the end of the day, it is such a blessing. And I heard a quote recently, what video was it? It was, it was something and someone said, it's better than the alternative. You know, aging is better than the alternative. So I will leave it on that. Those are the trends that I think need to die in 2022. We're gonna leave behind this year, sort of. I mean, some of them I still do like, but you know. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you tomorrow for the next day of Vlogmas. Bye.